Hello, Tom Vada here, and this is my short speed run on an uh, obscure game called The Immortal for the NES. This is one of these dungeon adventure games starring a wizard who spends a lot more time wielding a sword than actually using magic. It has a little bit of intrigue to it, and a lot of tough puzzles to solve. Well, we're going through all the screens kind of fast, but uh, all I can tell you is that uh, all that matters is you have to collect everything that you can find. Almost every item is important. In fact, there's some items, like there was a bag of bait inside that first treasure chest. If you forget to collect them, you render the rest of the game unbeatable. You need that bait in order to complete level 5, but you won't realize that you lost until you get there. These battle scenes have an interesting thing. The green meter on the right is my life power, the green meter on the left is his, and that red thing that was building up was a fatigue meter. You swing your sword too much, and you uh, start having to swing slower, and it leaves you more vulnerable to attack. Okay, we just sprung an arrow trap there without getting shot at. Now we're going through this darkened room. There's some hidden trap doors there, stuff to find. You have to make sure that you don't fall into any trap doors, because there's very low percentage of escaping from them. Anyway, we found an amulet in that room, shine it on the light right there to open up the secret passage to complete the level. Okay, level two. Grab the gem, run away from the living slime. Instant death if it touches you. And the little dwarf wants to sell us a potion, but he first charges you too much, and you don't have the money. He lowers his price when you talk to him a second time. Here we're using a charm spell to keep these floating uh, red things that are actually... They call them Will-o'-the-Wisps. Uh, they just float around and sometimes just stab at you. But they can also be used against your enemies once you have the charm. Cast it on them, and... These guards just kind of sit there and take a beating. It's kind of ridiculous that they don't feel any pain and don't do anything about it. We wait for these guards to die before we proceed, because they have very long life meters if we were to fight them head on. The guy is holding a bag of dust as well that we will use later. In this room, again we avoid combat. We planted some spores in the little soft patch of dirt to the left there. Then you immediately leave the room before they uh, explode open and poison everything in the room, including this king that you could never touch on your own without getting killed by a hidden spike trap. This game's loaded with all sorts of interesting ways to get killed. It's uh, actually pretty gruesome if you try them all. Anyway, we were merciful. We gave a bottle of water to that king so that he would give us a key. It's, it's the only way we could complete this level, and it advances the plot as well. That dust we got from the goblin, we hand to that, we throw in the air at that dwarf who is otherwise going to be mean and not give us his gem. Okay. This room contains another slime, but this one can be helpful if you have the right tools. We use the potion from the dwarf to protect ourselves, and then we drop a stone on the ground, and the slime touches the thing and makes a gem out of it. With three gems, you plant them in different spots on the floor and open up the exit. Level three. Here we get our first troll. We've been fighting green goblins for a while. Uh, sorry, Spider-Man. Uh, now we're moving on to trolls. The goblins actually are a little bit more intelligent 
beings than they start out as. First they were just guarding things so they were fighting you, but they're actually uh, reasonable and end up fighting on your side. Most of that plot you won't see here because we're advancing the text too quickly. But this is the first level where you don't have to fight a goblin unless you do anything stupid. Here we used a ring that we found downstairs to disguise ourselves as a goblin. And we walked right past the guard who was just sitting there looking dumb. And here's another battle between a goblin and a troll. We used a troll bomb to stun it so that we could get through the room without being attacked. And in this room we see... The Goblin King from the last level, who, despite being at the brink of death, is alive and somehow further ahead of you in the dungeons. Okay, this room is completely full of spike traps. Step on the wrong spot and you're dead. Follow this path so that you do not die. And pick up the red gem, which we'll need to get to the end of the level. Use a bomb there. So much of the speed here is avoiding combat. Running as fast as we can, and timing things just so. Okay, here's the exit tr trick. You gotta step in that flame when it turns green. If it's red, it will kill you. Once there, drop the gem, and voila. Okay, here's level four. This is an interesting and difficult level. There are worms under the surface of the dungeon floor that break through right where you're standing, a la the movie Tremors and kill you where you stand by swallowing you whole. To avoid that, you use this magic carpet. This is a side quest here in this ring that belongs to a woman named Anna. More on that later. But anyway, for these two rooms, you have to use the carpet to avoid the worms. Otherwise, you won't survive two or three steps. Clever movement here avoids battle. Oh, hi, I'm Anna. Okay. Short story, give her the ring. When you do that, she gives you a clue to how to get around the exit puzzle downstairs here. But first, there's a troll we have to fight. Decent soundtrack on this game. Here's an example of uh, using the fatigue meter. After swinging too much and taking a little bit of a beating, I had to stop swinging for a little bit to make the fatigue go down. You don't get fatigued when you dodge, thankfully, otherwise that might have been a little tough to do. Three laps around the triangle and we're out.